All right, last time a friend came over and she needed to leave her dog here while she went and did something. So I babysit a dog for a little while. Let's get back to this. We were where John had come out. No. Zacharias had come out. Start back at 59. And it came to pass that on the eighth day they came to circumcise the child, and they called him Zacharias after the name of his father. And his mother answered and said, Not so, but he shall be called John. And they said unto her, There is none of thy kindred that is called by this name. And they made signs to his father how he would have him called. And he asked for a writing table and wrote, saying, His name is John. And they marveled all. And his mouth was opened immediately, and his tongue loosed, and he spake and praised God. This is what I was going on about at the end. This is not a normal thing to just not be able to talk and then to be able to talk. And here's the thing. You got to think about this as Zacharias. You know, he said until the, the baby was born or whatever, you're not going to talk. Well, this is eight days out. He had to wait until he was circumcised and wait until the priest determined a name or, you know, set forth a name that was his name in agreement with the parents, of course, but they just assumed it would be Zacharias. And so then out of nowhere, this kid ain't even named according to a family name. <laughs> and the dad who hadn't been able to talk all of a sudden can talk. Can you imagine being him? Okay, and this is exactly what you would do. His tongue loosed, and he spake and praised God. I mean, think about that. Nine months you came and talked to your wife about the fact that God is performing a miracle in her womb. You can't say nothing. I mean, you could write things down. You can do gestures. So they did communicate, I'm sure, obviously. But, pff, hallelujah. Can't imagine not being able to talk for that long. And then being able to talk all of a sudden. And fear. There's a little bug just crawled out of this Bible pages. And fear came on all that dwelt round about them. And all these sayings were noised abroad throughout all the hill country in Judea. And all they that heard him laid them up in their hearts, saying, What manner of child shall this be? So everybody's like, God is in the mix here. From his conception to his birth and beyond, people knew John the Baptist was somebody different. And Zacharias, I'm sure, told him at some point, hey, he's coming in the spirit of Elias to prepare the way of the Messiah. Like, can you imagine growing up being that dude, your dad and your mom, both priests, family, you know, they know God, they live for God. And your dad had this experience before you were born. And he's sitting there talking to you as a kid saying, son, you have a calling on your life. Nope, you can't try wine. You can't try this. You can't do this. You can't do that because you're going to be set apart. You have to say no to the temptations and pleasures of the world. Because you are set to be set apart and have been set apart. And his father, verse 67, Zacharias was filled with the Holy Ghost. Hey, hallelujah. So his mom was filled with the Holy Ghost when Mary, with Jesus in her womb, walked up. His dad, after all this stuff was noised abroad... Or maybe they're just telling us like this was all this stuff went wrong. Oh yeah, by the way, and his father Zacharias was filled with the Holy Ghost and prophesied, saying, "Blessed be the Lord God of Israel." You notice how when the Holy Ghost comes upon people, they bless the Lord, for He hath visited and redeemed His people, and hath raised up an horn of salvation for us in the house of His servant David, and He spake by the mouth of His holy prophets which have been since the world began. And whence is this to me that the mother of my Lord, what? Oh, this is the parallel, sorry. Verse 70. 
that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. Okay, so, and he spake by the mouth of the holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. The oath which he sware to our father Abraham that he would grant unto us that we, being delivered out of the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways to give knowledge of salvation unto his people by the remission of their sins. Through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit and was in the deserts till the day of his shoeing unto Israel. So he grew up, he got strong, and he lived out in the desert in the woods until it was time for him to do what God called him to do. That is some powerful stuff right there. Like this father prophesying this over his son. Can you imagine walking in that type of fulfillment of the word of God? When God promises something, when he prophesies something, it will come to pass. And if the devil knows what you're called to do, he's going to try to stop you from fulfilling your call. So sometimes God has to make you a desert dweller to make it through. Because anywhere else, there's too many people that are working for the enemy. Chapter 2. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. All the world. So apparently Caesar was in charge of all the world. And this taxing was made was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was out of the house and lineage of David. So Joseph is from the lineage of David. To be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were, you know, some people say that, you know, I'm so sick that I can't travel by plane or something or bus or whatever. But I just think of the way people used to do. And when you, you had to go, you had to go. You know, you couldn't just be like, oh, I'm just going to sit here and die. I mean, you could. But people just bucked up, loaded up, and went. You know, and she was great with child, and they got to travel because some leader says y'all everybody needs to get money and we need to count everybody give y'all bring bring me some money we need to count you which i'm you know it's fine render under caesar what is caesar's render under god was god but th this woman was pregnant and she didn't have a comfortable car to ride in she didn't have a carriage to ride in and joseph went up from galilee out of the city of nazareth so he came from Nazareth into Judea unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary as a spouse wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger 
because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was an angel in a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem, and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste, and found Mary and Joseph, and the babe, lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. You see the power of your testimony? The Bible says you overcome the enemy with two things. Two things. Don't get it mixed. Two things. And it says that in the end, the saints are going to overcome with these two things. The blood of the lamb that wins the battle in the spirit realm. And the word of your testimony that wins the battle in the mental realm. Because as you begin to hear a testimony of somebody or you begin to give your testimony to somebody, a real testimony of how God did something for you. How these angels popped out of the sky and let you know that there was a baby born in a manger and you went and found him. And this guy is going to bring peace to the earth and he's the king of kings. You know, you begin to tell this stuff and spread it abroad. Your testimony overcomes doubt, overcomes what the enemy is saying Ah, uh, that's just a story. A story and a testimony have two different levels of power. You see, a testimony comes from the New Testament, a will and testament. It is what is said of you when you're gone. When you walk away, what you leave behind is your testament. What you leave behind is your testimony. So what is the testimony that your life, your words, your actions is leaving behind every day? You either overcome by your testimony or you are overcome by the testimony of the enemy against you. So anyways, my point is these guys had a testimony that say angels came out, all this stuff. So, and they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and a babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told to them concerning the child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things that were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that she had heard and seen, as it was told unto them. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. And when eight days were accomplished for the circumcising of the child, his name was called Jesus. So they didn't even name him for eight days, which was so named of the angel before he was conceived in the womb. Before he was conceived in the womb. And when the days of her purification, according to the law of Moses, were accomplished, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every male that openeth the womb shall be called holy to the Lord. 
and to offer a sacrifice according to that which is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and the name, and the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Ghost was upon him. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. All right, there's another time when he says to the people, "You, there are people who will not see death until you see his kingdom. Jesus said, when I cast out devils by the finger of God, the kingdom of God has come to you. So this man wasn't going to taste death until he's seen the Lord's Messiah, Christ, the Lord's Christ. When Jesus comes later, he says, some of you here will not see death until you have seen the kingdom of God. So then he casts out devils, fulfillment of prophecy in motion. And he came by the Spirit into the temple. And he, and it was revealed to him, the Holy Ghost, he said, okay, so Simeon. And so Simeon came by the, it says he, by the Spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him after the custom of the law. Then took he up in his arms. He picked up Jesus as a baby. <laughs> and blessed God and said, Lord. Now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace, according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation. Before Jesus died, even grew up. There's a man in the temple lifting up a baby, saying, I have seen thy salvation. Talking to the Lord. Who's that? The Father in heaven. Who's he talking about? The sun on earth. They're not the same folks. They're not the same ones. The father is the father. The son is the son. Jesus is Melchizedek. And now he's born of a virgin. After the order of Melchizedek, he's the high priest of the most high. And he is king of kings. And he is God over heaven and earth. And he's been given that authority by his father. That is what the Bible says. And this is just another example Lord, now let us, Lord, talking to the Father in heaven, now let us thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. What was that word? That he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation. Jesus' name literally means thy salvation. From, sorry, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, a light to lighten the Gentiles. This is before anybody even knew there was going to be the gospel brought to the Gentiles. Like, no one had discussed this. Jesus hadn't said, hey, you're going to the Gentiles. This is your ministry. You're going to the Jews. You're going to kings. And then the Holy Ghost came upon the Gentiles. They never heard of such a thing. But this right here, this man Simeon is letting everybody know. This is the salvation of the Lord Most High, and it's going across the world. It's going to be a light to even the Gentiles and glory of all thy people Israel. That's exciting. Can you imagine that? Like, you just had a baby. I mean, you know who he is. You're Mary. You're Joseph. He lifts up the baby. His name is Jesus. It means salvation. And this guy starts prophesying all this stuff. And Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him. And Simeon blessed them and said unto Mary his mother, Behold, this child is set for the fall and rising again of many in Israel and for a sign which shall be spoken against. Yea, a sword shall pierce through thine own soul also that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. And there was one Anna, a prophetess, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. 
she was of great age and had lived with an husband seven years from her virginity. And she was widowed about four score and four years. Okay, so it doesn't say how old she was, but her husband died 84 years ago and she lived with him for seven. So that means she was 91 plus however long it took her to reach puberty. So she's probably 100 years old, minimum. I mean, some girls get their reach that age younger, but she was a minimum 100 years old. So of a great age, and she was a widow, four score. That's four times 20 and four, so that's 84 years, which departed not from the temple. So once she was a widow, she went to the temple and she served God with fastings and prayers night and day. And she, coming in that instant, gave thanks likewise unto the Lord and spake of him to all them that looked for redemption in Jerusalem. And when they had performed all things according to the law of the Lord, they returned into Galilee to their own city, Nazareth. And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. Let's read that again. Her name is Anna, daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She came after the other dude at that instant, gave thanks likewise unto the Lord and spake of him to all them that looked for redemption. So she told people about Jesus, everybody who wants redemption. She told them about Jesus being born, that the Messiah was here. And when they had performed all things according to the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee to their own city, Nazareth. So Joseph was from Nazareth. Jesus was born in Bethlehem. And then he moved back to Nazareth. So now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. And when he had fulfilled the days, when they had fulfilled the days, as they returned, the child Jesus tarried behind in Jerusalem. It means he stayed behind. He didn't come out with them. They just, so they, they started to return and Jesus stayed behind. And Joseph and his mother knew not of it. They had no idea he wasn't with them. Now you got to remember, this wasn't just like people just mom, dad, kid walking alone. People walked in groups of people. You know, and groups of people or road came to the Passover. And when it was over, groups of people went back home. So there was lots of kids, lots of families. They probably expected Jesus to be hanging out with the kids. And he was 12 years old at this time. So you get you had that. He's... They went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. And when they had fulfilled the days as they returned, the child Jesus was not with them. And Joseph and his mother knew not of it. But they, supposing him to have been in the company, see, went a day's journey, and they sought him among their kinsfolks and acquaintances. So they walked for a whole day, and then when it was time to go to bed, they're like, hey, where's Jesus? We need to get Jesus. And when they found him not, they turned back again to Jerusalem, seeking him. And it came to pass after that after three days, they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them and asking them questions. And all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. And when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said unto him, Son, why hast thou thus dealt with us? Behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrowing. Like we thought something bad happened to you. We thought you died. We, 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 we were worried about you. You see, we this, da, 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 da. And he said unto them, How is it that ye sought me? Wist ye not that I must be about my father's business? You see, he was no longer a child. He's grown up. And now it's time for him to be about his father's business. 
And they understood not the saying when she spake unto them. Man, get over here. Let's get out, get out of here. We got to go. I don't know what you're talking about. Look, we got to get out of here. We got to get back to Nazareth. I got a business to run. I'm a carpenter. You know, maybe something like that. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject unto them. But his mother kept all these things in her heart. So he didn't rebel against his parents. But basically what I take from that is just like, I didn't know, even know you left. Like I've been at the temple. I figured you would have come and got me. And you should have known I'm going to be about my father's business. So like from now on, I mean, and Mary knows all this stuff. She, it keeps saying she keeps this stuff in her heart. You see, that's why later on he can say, woman, it's not my time. Because she knows this stuff. She has the Holy Ghost. Jesus has the Holy Ghost. They're, they're acquainted with having the Holy Ghost throughout the whole Bible. It's not a new thing. The new thing is that God would pour it out on all flesh. Anybody who wants to come to Jesus and be baptized in the Holy Spirit can be baptized in the Holy Spirit. That's the only difference between that then and now. Now it's available to all men through Jesus. And all that heard him were astonished at his understandings and answers. And when he saw them, saw him, they were amazed. As much. Okay, we just read that. And they understood not. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject unto them. But his mother kept all these things in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. Chapter 3. Now in the 15th year of the reign of Tiberius, Caesar, Pontius Pilate being governor of Judea, and Herod being tetrarch of Galilee, and his brother Philip tetrarch of Iturea, and of the region of Trachonitis, and Lysanias, the tetrarch of Abilene, Annas and Caiaphas being the high priests, the word of God came unto John, the son of Zacharias, in the wilderness. So he's been in the desert and in the wilderness, and the word of God came unto him. And he came into all the country about Jordan, preaching the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. As it is written in the book of the words of Isaiah the prophet, saying the voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be brought low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough ways shall be made smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. Then said he to the multitude that came forth to be baptized of him, O generation of vipers, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bring forth therefore fruits worthy of repentance." And begin not to say within yourselves, We have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you, That God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. And now also the axe is laid into the root of the trees. Every tree therefore which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. And the people asked him saying, What shall we do then? He answered and saith unto him, He that hath two coats, let him impart to him that hath none. He that hath meat, let him do likewise. If you have more than you need, go give it to somebody that doesn't have what, you, what they need, is what he's saying. Like, see somebody who has less than you and give of your abundance. This is John the Baptist. Then came also publicans to be baptized, baptized, and said unto him, Master, what shall we do? Publicans, tax collectors, you know, the people who take the money from people. And he said unto them, Exact no more than that which is appointed to you. That means don't take no more than you're told that these people are owed. You got your books, it says they owe this amount. 
don't take no more. They tell you we made this, you're allowed to charge this amount. Don't take that amount and then a little bit for yourself. Don't be a thief. Exact no more than that which is appointed you. And the soldiers likewise demanded of him saying, and what shall we do? And he said unto them, do violence to no man, neither accuse any falsely and be content with your wages. This is a command to the police. This is a command to the police. If you're a police officer, if you are in military, if you are charged with keeping the peace and order, do violence to no man and neither accuse any falsely and be content with your wages. So don't be taking money and bribes to protect people or to do things don't be, be content with what you agreed to get paid for doing the job. And as the people were in expectation and all men mused in their hearts of John, whether he were the Christ or not. So John is saying, prepare the way, make it straight, make it smooth. It's going to be all this stuff. And they're like, is he the Messiah? Is John the Messiah? And John answered. He's like, I, I'm going to put this to bed right now. John answered saying unto them, I indeed baptize you with water, but one mightier than I, the latchet of whose shoes I am not worthy to unloose. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Some people say I've been baptized in the Holy Ghost. But I'm not bad. I don't speak in tongues. Okay. I'm willing to delineate that as two different things. The Holy Ghost. Baptism into the family of God. Through faith in Jesus Christ. Confession of your mouth and believing in your heart that he is the son of God. And that God raised him from the dead. And you confess him as Lord. The Holy Spirit raises your dead spirit. to life with Jesus. Baptism in the Holy Spirit. Becoming, that is the baptism that matters. The baptism of faith and belief into the kingdom of God. Where you believe that Jesus is the Son. And the Holy Spirit has bore witness inside of your spirit that Jesus is who he said he is. And you believe. It's the baptism of faith, folks. And when you get that and you confess it out of your mouth, well, you got that. So let's go to the end with fire. Later on, people, they're like, Dude, has the Holy Ghost come upon you? After they believed in Jesus, after they had been saved, and they said, we have not been told of any Holy Ghost. And it says immediately, I think, either way, at that point, they laid hands on them, prayed for them, they received the Holy Ghost, and spake with other tongues. So, if you have not received that, since before Jesus was operating, has been known to be expecting of the baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire. Whose fan is in his hand and he will thoroughly purge his floor and will gather the wheat into his garner, but the chaff he will burn with fire unquenchable and many other things in his exhortation preached he unto the people. But Herod the Tetrarch being reproved by him for Herodias his brother Philip's wife and for all the evils which Herod had done, added yet to this above all, and shut him up, shut up John in prison. So we read, I believe, at least in Mark, that Herodias, for Herod, the Tetrarch, being reproved by John the Baptist, for Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, who he married, and he said it should not be so, and Herodias wanted to kill John the Baptist, 
It's saying all these other things for, and he reproved him for all the other evils which Herod had done. He called the leader out on his wickedness. And so he added to that and put him in prison. Now, when all the people were baptized, it came to pass that Jesus also being baptized and praying, the heaven was opened and the Holy Ghost descended in a bodily shape like a dove upon him. Some people say he came down as a dove. He, he, he didn't really come down in the bodily form of a dove. It just kind of looked like a dove or it was a spirit hologram dove. It was a, you know, a heaven hologram. This right here, according to Luke, who is a physician, okay, said that he descended in a bodily shape and that this bodily shape, this physical shape of a body, three-dimensional, has a bodily shape. Looked like a dove to him. All right. Like a dove upon him and a voice from heaven. You got Jesus. You got the Holy Ghost. And you got the Father. Three separate bodies, folks. Jesus is not the Father in a Messiah suit. He's not. He's God over heaven and earth. But he's not Yahweh. He's Yeshua. And God is showing us the Trinity right here. Everything that God is, everything that the Holy Spirit is, all of it, Jesus is the Godhead bodily. Just like the Holy Spirit is like a dove bodily. If it's going to be represented in a, in a form, it's going to be represented in the gentleness of a dove. And Jesus is the fulfillment of the Godhead bodily. And right here, we see Jesus is not talking to himself. He's not up there. Oh, yeah, and I've got this projection. I'm this physical body down here. And I'm going to use my powers to open up heaven. And from heaven, I'm going to speak from my father form over myself and say I'm pleased with myself. That's not what's going on, folks. It's going on exactly as you read it. The Father is in heaven sitting on his throne. He don't come down. Not, not right now. There's no ancient of days hopping on earth right now. He's on his throne. We are his footstool. And we are as grasshoppers to him. It's pretty big in comparison to us. Big enough. You know, just the fact, however you envision the universe, whether it's this unending expanse with no boundaries, with planets hurling through it, God said that the earth is his footstool. So, deal with that. Because no matter how big or small you think it is, how finite or infinite you think it is, we are his footstool. And the Father's in heaven. Jesus at this time is on earth. Two separate people. Two separate persons of the Godhead. And the Holy Spirit comes down Unless Luke is lying to us or God put forth an amazing three-dimensional hologram, this Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, came down in the bodily form of a dove. So if you preach different than that, you're preaching against the Bible or you just haven't read this part and you've read another gospel where it doesn't say in the bodily form of a dove. But that's why you got to read it all. So that you know where to stand on what God said about his own stuff. 
So when, said, when people say, hey, do you believe the Holy Spirit came down from heaven in the form of a dove, like an actual form, bodily of a dove? Yep, I sure do, because Luke said so. That's simple to me. If you want to disagree with Scripture, that's up to you. But I'm going to use Luke to clarify what the other guy said. It was actually the bodily form of a dove. Or a super duper good 3D heaven hologram. Either way, and the Holy Ghost descended in the bodily form like a dove upon him, and a voice came from heaven. Let's see who this voice is. Is it Gabriel saying, hey, this is Jesus. He's the son of God. And I am Gabriel. Fear not. I'm letting you know who he is. He's the son of God, and God is pleased with him. Is this a messenger? Let's see what is about to happen. Let's get clarity so we know the truth. Because people, for some reason, don't grasp this. Thou art my beloved son. The only person who can say that to his son is his father. And Jesus isn't talking to and about himself in father form. The Ancient of Days, the Most High, our Father in Heaven, hallowed be thy name, is opened up heaven. The Holy Ghost has come down in a bodily form, and he is saying, Thou art my beloved Son. In thee I am well pleased. And Jesus himself, being about 30 years of age, being as was supposed the son of Joseph, which was the son of Heli, which was the son of Matthat, which was the son of Levi, which was the son of Melchi, which was the son of Jana, which was the son of Joseph. Which was the son of Mattathias, which was the son of Amos, which was the son of Nahum, which was the son of Els Esli, which was the son of Nagog, Naji. Nagy, I don't know, which was the son of Maath, which was the son of Mattathias, which was the son of Simei, which was the son of Joseph, which was the son of Judah, which was the son of Joanna, which was the son of Resa, Rehesa, which was the son of Zerubbabel, which was the son of Salathiel, which was the son of Neri, which was the son of Melchi, which was the son of Adai, which was the son of Kosam, which was the son of Elmodam, which was the son of Ur, which was the son of Jose, which was the son of Eleazar, which was the son of Joram, which was the son of Matthat, which was the son of Levi, which was the son of Simeon, which was the son of Judah, which was the son of Joseph, which was the son of Jonan, which was the son of Eliakim, which was the son of Melie, Meli, Melie, I don't know, which was the son of Menan, which was the son of Mattatha, which was the son of Nathan, which was the son of David, which was the son of Jesse, which was the son of Obed, which was the son of Boaz, which was the son of Salmon, which was the son of Neasson, which was the son of Amminadab, which was the son of Aram, which was the son of Esram, which was the son of Perez, which was the son of Judah, which was the son of Jacob, which was the son of Isaac, which was the son of Abraham, which was the son of Therah, and which was the son of Nacor, which was the son of Saruk, which was the son of Ragua, Ragua, Ragwe, I don't know, which was the son of Phalek, which was the son of Heber, which was the son of Selah, which was the son of Cainan, which was the son of Arphaxed, which was the son of Sem, which was the son of Noe, which was the son of Lamech, which was the son of Methuselah, which was the son of Enoch, which was the son of Jared, which was the son of Maleliel, 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 Maleliel which was the son of Malaliel, which was the son of Cainan, which was the son of Enos, which was the son of Seth, which was the son of Adam, which was the son of God. So that is the lineage of Jesus through Joseph. And you see right here why Jesus is called the second Adam. Because Adam was created by the hands of God in the womb of the earth. 
Jesus was created by the power of God in the womb of Mary. Chapter 4. And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned. So how old what did it say he was, guys, at this point? 30 years old? Is that right? Is that right? Did it say he was 30? And Jesus himself began to be about 30 years of age. Okay, so he was baptized when he was 30. Or about 30, whatever. Figure it out as we go. What is going on here? I gotta fix this. I got this all out of whack. Ah. Oh well, I'll fix it later. And being full of the Holy Ghost. Okay. And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost from being baptized at 30 years old, turned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being 40 days tempted of the devil. And in those days he did eat nothing, and when they were ended, he afterward hungered. And the devil said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, command this stone that it be made bread. And Jesus answered him, saying, It is written that man shall not live by bread alone but by every word of God. And the devil, taking him up into a high mountain, shoot into him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. All right, check this out. So this came from this section. You know, it's got some pretty cool illustrations, and, you know, they're over 100 years old. But I wanted to show you this one. That's from Revelation. Never mind. But this is the end of Revelation. And you can't see it real good, but that's Jerusalem coming out of heaven. But this is how I imagine it, though. Gee, he, this ain't the devil. But the devil took Jesus. This is a John and an angel. But this is how I imagine it. He just showed him. You know, when I saw this in the, the city, I don't know if you can tell, but that's a city along there. I saw, like, that's how Jesus did right here with or the devil did right here with Jesus. Took him up into a high mountain and shoot into him all the kingdoms. I lost it right as I was saying it because I looked away. And the devil said to him, all right, unto all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. So he's seen them all. That quick. And the devil taken, okay. And the devil said to him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them. For that is delivered unto me, to whomsoever I will, I give it. Now, think about this in comparison to Isaiah 14 and Lucifer being cast down from being king of Babylon. Something that I'm trying to tell you didn't happen in the beginning of time. The angels left their first estate. Lucifer, according to Isaiah, is a man. At least in the bodily form of a man. And he will be cast down before kings, before all the people he controlled. And right here, he's letting you know how powerful he is. And why? Because... All this power will I give thee in the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will, I give it. So at this point, he has the power to give all that to men, because he's roaming the earth. And something happened here. We are 732 and 729. Oh, this must be where this fits in. Boom. If thou wilt worship me, we fixed it. <laughs> if thou wilt worship me, 
all shall be thine. And Jesus answered and said to him, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. He might not have said it like that. He might have been struggling with the temptation. It says that he struggled with every temptation. So it might have been more like, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship. You know, probably wasn't, but either way. And he brought him to Jerusalem and set him on a pinnacle of the temple and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, this is happening the whole time, right? Like when he's died. If thou be the Son of God, come off the cross. See, God don't prove himself in your way that you want him to prove himself. He proves himself in his way. If you hold God to account for what he said he will do, he'll prove himself to you. If you try to say, Lord, if you're God, then give me a Lamborghini for free. If you're God, come off that cross. If you're God, let me cast myself off this thing and the angels catch me. And he brought him to Jerusalem and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down from hence, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou shalt dash thy foot against the stone. And Jesus answering said unto him, It is said, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And when the devil had ended all temptation, he departed from him for a season. So he tempted him of everything he could be tempted of that mattered. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. And there went out a fame of him through all the region round about. And he taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. Everybody received him at this point. And he came to Nazareth, Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. It was his custom to go into the synagogue every Sabbath and stood up for to read. Does everybody just walk into the synagogue and read? And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, he hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book, and he gave it again to the minister, and sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. Boom. Mic drop. And all bear him witness and wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, Is not this Joseph's son? And he said unto them, Ye will surely say unto me this proverb, Physician, heal thyself. Whatsoever we have done in Capernaum, do also here in thy country. And he said, Verily I say unto you, No prophet is accepted in his own country. But I tell you of a truth. Many widows were in Israel in the days of Elias, when the heaven was shut up three years and six months, when great famine was throughout all the land. But unto none of them was Elias sent, save unto Serepita, the city of Sidon, unto a woman that was a widow. And many lepers were in Israel in the time of Eli Elysius, the prophet. And none of them was cleansed, saving Naaman, the Syrian. The Syrian. So there was a lot of widows in his time, but God only sent them to one. There were a lot of lepers, but only Naaman was cleansed. And all they in the synagogue, when they heard these things, were filled with wrath. And rose up and thrust him out of the city. God doesn't pick everyone. 
led him unto the brow of the hill, whereon to their city was built, that they might cast him down headlong. So they ran Jesus out of Galilee. When he said, you all aren't going to receive me because I'm a prophet and this is where I'm from, essentially. And then he gave them examples. But he, passing through the midst of them, like they're running to push him to the edge. Like, who, like they just all run to the edge and when they get there, they just realize that they all ran up there for no reason. But he, passing through the midst of them, went his way and came down in Capernaum. Some people say Jesus went invisible at this moment and just passed through the crowd. Because they were going to kill him. And came down to Capernaum, a city of, Gal a city of Galilee, and taught them in the Sab on the Sabbath days. And they were astonished in his doctrine. For his word was with power. And in the synagogue there was a man which had a spirit of an unclean devil and cried out with a loud voice, saying, Let us alone! What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee who art thou, who thou art, the Holy One of God. The Holy One of God. Two persons. The demons knew the difference between the Holy One, Jesus, the Messiah, the Anointed One, the Christ, and the Father, God. So take a lesson from the demons if you need to, because it, they weren't lying because of what Jesus said and commanded next. We know they were telling the truth. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace and come out of him. And when the devil had thrown him in the midst, he came out of him and heard him not. One time a preacher told me that when you cast a demon out of somebody, it just goes. It don't give you no trouble. It don't try to fight back. But here's yet another example of a demon who cast the dude he was possessing out into the midst, middle of him. And then he came out, but the guy wasn't hurt. And other times, people were like so abused by the demon during the exorcism that people think he's dead. So that pastor has no experience in this, or at least didn't at that time. And when the devil had thrown him in the midst, he came out of him and heard him not. And he also said it wasn't biblical. So hello, read the Bible. And they were all amazed and spake among themselves saying, what a word is this? For with authority and power, he commanded the unclean spirits, and they came out. What a word is this. Now, in my raising with profanity, like I hear that locally, people saying, what the F is this? But what does this mean? What a word is this? Like, is this that same type of thing? Like, is this the same type of explanation and, and intense disbelief and exclamation of what's going on like what in the world is going on what who's ever heard of this is that what it's saying the the word what a word is this who's ever heard of this has anybody ever heard of this before you know this is old english translated from the greek or whatever but what a word is this for with authority and power he commandeth the unclean spirits and they come out and the fame of him went out into every place of the country round about. And he arose out of the synagogue and entered into Simon's house. And Simon's wife's mother was taken with a great fever, and they besought him for her. And he stood over her and rebuked the fever, and it left her. And immediately she arose and ministered unto them. Now when the sun was setting, all they that had any sick with diverse diseases brought them unto him. And he laid hands on every one of them and healed him. Another account of the principle of laying on of hands for healing to take place. Lay the hands on the edge of his garment. Him lay the hands on him. 
There's a principle there, and we need to expect God to meet us in his, when we obey. And the devils also came out of many, crying out and saying, the demons here, guys, like, the demons know that he's the Holy One of God the Father. The demons know that, that he's the Anointed One. And here, thou art Christ, the Son of God. And you're going to tell me that he's the Father if you're preaching some other Trinity doctrine. Jesus is not the Father. He is not Father God. He is the Son of the Most High God of heaven and earth. Oh, you're talking about two gods. No, because God means supreme authority. The will of Jesus is the same supreme authority and will of the Father. They are two beings under one authority. One of them is the Ancient of Days. One of them is the Father. One of them is the Holy One. One of them is the Son. You can preach something different if you want to, but I'm showing you why I believe what I believe. And when you understand the Trinity the way it's supposed to be understood, the Bible makes a whole lot more sense. How to pray makes a whole lot more sense. It's not a polytheistic religion here. And when, but they are separate persons. Preach at your own peril something different than the word of God. Thou art Christ, the Son of God, and he, Christ, Jesus, the Anointed One, the Holy One, the Son of God, Messiah, rebuking them, suffered them not to speak, for they knew that he was the Christ, and, like, seriously, are you going to be more foolish than a demon and say that he's not the son, that he's actually the father in Messiah form? Come on, folks. Jesus, and I'm pushing this, and for those of you who may have never even heard any Trinity doctrine, there's doctrine out there that says that Jesus is his own God as far as, like, you know, a polytheistic thing, which he isn't. He is possessor of authority given to him by God the Father, making him God over heaven and earth, King of kings and Lord of lords. And he will sit upon his throne in New Jerusalem. That's what it says. He Then he will give that throne and his crowns back to the Father. The demons knew that he was the Christ, and they knew who Father God is. They knew he's the Holy One of God, the Son of the Most High. They know the difference. So I'm telling you, know the difference. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. He didn't give himself. He gave his only begotten Son. Jesus, Melchizedek, said, yes, I'm going to step down from my position of high priest, immortal, and become mortal. Tempted as man, filled with the Holy Spirit, obedient to the will of the Father. God sent him so that if you believe in him, you shall not perish but have everlasting life. All you got to do is believe that Jesus is who he said he is. Believe that Jesus is who the Father said he is. Believe that Jesus is who the Holy Spirit said he is. And who these men who were personal eyewitness testimonies, sorry, eyewitnesses, and their testimony. Believe that in your heart, that he's the son of God, and that God, the Father, raised Christ from the dead. Confess that with your mouth, and you will be saved. Because that's what it comes down to. Faith, believing and believing to the point that you change the way you live. You know, if I say, hey, don't bring lunch tomorrow, I got you. I'm bringing lunch. 
or we're going out for lunch and you normally bring a lunch every day. If you believe me, you're not going to pack a lunch. You're going to be ready to go out to eat for dinner. And if I say I'm covering it, you're not bringing nothing. You're not bringing money. You're not bringing nothing to cover your end because I said, I got you. If you believe that Jesus is the son of God, then you must believe what Jesus taught and you must die to self, take up your cross every single day because he's, you have been bought with his blood. And if you will just receive his gift, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God, the father is eternal life through his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The demons knew who he was, folks. That's what I'm trying to tell you. So you need to know demons are real. They exist. They indwell people. Almost every Christian, almost every person has demons in them. That's controversial. You don't believe that. But Jesus said the deliverance is the children's bread. You weren't even a child of God until you were adopted into the family and Christ gave you the power to become sons and daughters of God. You weren't even that a children to have the bread. But now that you are saved, deliverance from demons is the children's bread. And Christians need deliverance. But you need somebody to believe that, to be able to pray the prayer of faith and have the authority that they know who they are in Christ over that demon. That's hard to find. I can't find it locally anyways. The demons knew he was Christ. And when it was day, he departed and went into a desert place. And the people sought him and came unto him and stayed with him, and, or sorry, and stayed him that he should not depart. They said, please don't leave that he should not depart from them. And he said unto them, I must preach the kingdom of God to other cities also. For therefore am I sent. And he preached in the synagogues of Galilee. Folks, Jesus is the son of the most high God, father of all. He died for us. And right here, he's beginning the ministry of preaching the kingdom of God. And when you see demons cast out of you by the, or other people, by the finger of God, the kingdom of God has come to you. And as Jesus said, there are some of you who will not see death before you see the kingdom of God come unto you. Blessings. Shalom, shalom.